You're listening to Healing Voices Project, where we share stories and the latest information from people who fight addiction every day. I'm Mike Torvelt, your host and author of Voices from the Fallen. Thank you for listening, for following, and most of all, for sharing with people you care about. Make your voice count too. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us at Healing Voices Project. I have two special guests today, Katie Patterson and Tatiana Shearer from BHN, the Behavior Health Network, and um, who work at a place, a program called The Living Room. And uh, Katie, you're a, a Western Mass native who has now yeah. been at The Living Room for three and a half years. Yes. And I think you're certainly one of the reasons this program has been successful. Thank as we you. could see clearly. And Tatiana, you're a certified specialist, sp a certified peer specialist, mm -hmm. and you've been at the living room a little bit longer. How long have you been there? Five years. Five years. How long has the program been in existence? Uh, we're celebrating almost 10 years now. Oh, so wow. it's like nine and a half mark. Wow. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that's a great yeah. sign of success. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, so there's a lot to talk about with the living room, how it works, um, what's involved, and a few success stories, and I think we can get into some related things, but there's a lot to talk about. And I'll just tell you what got my attention um, from Katie, give you uh, credit, because a couple of months ago we were at the Hammond County Sheriff's Task Force, and you did a presentation about the living room, and I was so impressed. I said, well, got to have you on. Got to have to talk about this program. <laughs> Thank you very Because much. you did a great job. And um, you brought up, I think what was most moving to me was the success stories that my you brought part. up. It sure was, <laughs> yeah. And that really got my attention. So we want to talk about that. So before we get into it, then you've been here a little bit longer at the living room, Tatiana. Uh, let's talk about what, what your role is, how it's got started, and a little bit about the program. I have been here the longest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the HN years seem to just fly by. So um, how I got started in the living room is I had a roommate at the time who was a recovery coach, and she just walked up to me um, and said, you would be a great peer specialist, and the rest is history. You know, I got the nerves out, I interviewed, got the position and I started out as a peer specialist and I walk into the living room which is this unreal place of just like comfort and warmth and it was inviting the peers are very kind they're compassionate they're understanding and I believe our lived experience provides that sense of um, empathy mm -hmm. Because you yourself ex have experienced, you yourself are, are in recovery, and you can relate, you know what it's like. And as a true peer specialist, mm. you understand and have a level of compassion that I think a lot of people might not see it mm -hmm. as well as you do. Um, and we can talk about what, what brought you here. And, and Katie, your role at the living room is how is that different from Tatiana's role? So Tatiana's my boss. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> and Tatiana oversees like, all the peers and all the living room, but all the peers for the whole of BHN. Mm -hmm. um, I oversee the peer specialist for the living room and for the crisis department. So I started out as a peer just like Tatiana did, and um, I moved my way up to senior certified peer. So now the peers that are at the living room, I make sure they're well supported as well as the guests are well supported because being a peer is very emotionally intense and mm -hmm. that's really, you know, here to make sure everyone's okay and support everyone throughout BHN. Mm -hmm. Because what you're interacting with every day, it can certainly be exhausting. Emotionally, so. Emotionally, yes, right. Because there's yes. really, really high highs where you know, this is the best day and this person got better and there's really low lows where we have, you know, guests pass away. Mm -hmm. and. Um, those two things can happen within an hour. <laughs> so it can be pretty emotionally intense. The end um, of the day, you're like, whew. Yes. <laughs> you're usually, yes. <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, my role, and there's two other supervisors with me as well, is to make sure that the guests are well supported, the staff are well supported, and we are operating under the peer support code of ethics and guidelines. Okay. And uh, we talked earlier, but the living room has been th there in place for 10 years now? 
Almost, Almost, just about, yeah. yeah. What's changed in 10 years with the living room? Um, you can say there's a lot that's changed outside that, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in terms of that specific program, yeah. how has it changed given all the things that have occurred around us? Um, honestly, <coughs> minus the pandemic with all those restrictions, we never closed. Um, so going back even further, when it opened, um, it had never been done before. There were no structure, policies, procedures. There was no such thing as a peer, as a, a worker, um, as an employee. So the idea was introduced and it was built from the ground up. So you have this, you know, little program that's really just trying to provide support in the community in a much different way than you need help, you need services, you need to go inpatient right now. In fact, it was this person's really tired. This person's actually really hungry. So that's, that's how we started. And so we go there and, you know, fast forward a couple of years where we are now facilitating trainings and, and actually being a part of the peer movement and incorporating all of these values into the behavioral health system where it's just unheard of. Yeah. <laughs> what do clinicians do with peers? It, it is this, you know, anomaly because we understand clinicians, we understand the guest, and sometimes people are just crisis fatigued themselves yeah and so they don't want to do it right now they don't want to go to the hospital they don't need to take their medications whatever the case may be um we have uh i want to say very few requirements the person needs to be able to take care of themselves be able to you know take their own medications you know manage their own selves ma manage them their time advocate for their needs they come to us and say i need a b and c and then we will walk with you through that process <coughs> um, over the years it's just become bigger and better more efficient um, as far as the staff the quality of care that is really the change because the model wasn't broken. So we didn't try to fix it, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> so to speak. Yep. What we did was expand on our values, which is uh, person first, person centered language, trauma informed care. That's just this mind blowing new idea that's, you know, not new, but new to, to, to workers in, in this field. And there's one facility in Springfield. There's one living room. There's one living there's room. One there are other peer facilities, but there's one living room. Okay. And uh, so has this idea been replicated elsewhere? And uh, and if so, how does that, how has that turned out? Or are you it? So we are, <laughs> in a way, we are it for what we are. Okay. Um, there yeah. are other places called the living room, but those are specifically for coming out of inpatient. You'll go here. Mm -hmm. It can't be, it's not a walk-in where anyone can come in. Okay. So the walk-in model, the you know, crisis divergent model, the emergency divergent model, that is pretty unique to us. Um, and yeah, I would say um, specifically the living room is unique because we have clinical oversight, mm -hmm. but it's completely peer run, peer oriented. And if we need support, we'll go to the, to, to the big dogs and like, hey, you know, here's our help button almost <laughs> for crisis. And they, we are completely unified in that. You mm -hmm. know, we used to be under the emergency services umbrella. Now we've kind of just morphed into this island of just peer support. Yep. And, you know, now they're coming to us like, hey, here's their help. We're their help button now. And, you know, it just works. It's that collaboration. Whereas if, if someone does need um, more services, then they can get that if they don't need it. Mm -hmm. And they're coming out and they just want to relax before they go to their next step. That's that's the game. That It's really not much to it. Um, there is one in Greenfield that she was referencing. Um it's literally called the living room, but again, there's really strict um, structure to it and a lot of rules um, where we're just more open, welcome, inviting, and just you don't need to be in treatment to get the support. And I think the success of the program for 10 years, particularly the last five, when you guys have been involved, um, <laughs> <laughs> says, <laughs> says a lot, though, the fact that yeah. you've, you've been doing this for five years and as successful as it is, because I know you've got... Speaking of success, you've got a few success stories. I know, Katie, when we first met, you had brought up those stories, and I thought, wow, that was very moving. Um, and so maybe we talk. About, want to talk about a success story? I know you brought Absolutely. up. Yeah, maybe there's more than one. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. a bunch. Yeah, that's <laughs> good, yeah. The one I spoke about at the yeah. Hamden County Addiction Task Force meeting yeah. um, was about an older gentleman, and uh, he was 
I think 76, I believe. When he first walked in the when door. When he first walked in the door. Mm-hmm. Um, well, he rang our doorbell. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, he was homeless, mm-hmm. uh, an alcoholic, and he was very content being both of those things. Um, he was content to live in the abandoned building next to us. He was in- content to live under a bridge if he had to. And he was content just drinking his life away, really. Um, and something that you have to get used to with working at the living room is you kind of have to be okay with that. Um, because peers support person motivated goals. So the first time he rang our doorbell, you know, he was sober at the time because we don't let anyone who's super intoxicated into mm-hmm. our space. Um, he was very grumpy and he said, I just need a cup of coffee. And I said, I'm going to get you the best cup of coffee that you can possibly <laughs> have then, <laughs> yeah. sir. So he comes in and he sits down and then, you know, I sat down with him or other peers sat down with him. And, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, who he was. He was a veteran. Um, he had been homeless for a long time. His mother was still alive. She was 100, um, and I think 101. Wow. wow. And um, we learned, you know, he'd come in every single day. And had he seen his mother for a while? He I mean, hadn't spoken to her in, in a, a very long time. In a long time, okay. Um, he knew where she was. He mm-hmm. knew her phone number, mm-hmm. and we have a phone, but he didn't want to do it. Um, you know, with gentle suggestions like, it, you know, it's Mother's Day today, or, you know, um, they didn't work. Um, so eventually, you know, every day for about six months, he'd come in, get a cup of coffee, give us the same, you know, you know, same grumpy, grumpy answers, attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was really hard for a staff as well to support him walking out the door, knowing he's going to go Backward. being in that yeah. abandoned building. So eventually, you know, we always brought up the idea that hey, you know, on the way out, here's our resources for detox, or here's our resources for this. But it's just a gentle suggestion. It's never you have to do this. So. One day he came in and it was in the winter and it was very cold in the winter and he was I think at this point he might have been 77 and uh he got the cup of coffee sat down he goes fine and I was like fine what (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about Mm -hmm. and he goes give me the number for detox and I said awesome you know so after six months of sitting down all of our peers getting to know this person on an individual level relating to him you know a lot of our staff had veteran families Mm -hmm. um he went to detox And he failed. You know, he was there for about two hours and walked right out, came right back to the living room. Well, he he, came back to you. He did. Because he knew that coming back to the living room, we're not a judgmental space. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to knock you or judge you if you fail at trying to recover. So he did this a lot. He went But also, do not interrupt you, but you obviously established it established a trust with him which is a very big thing within peers is we learn from our guests just as much as they learn from us Mm -hmm. we build that rapport and that's where you know we are non-clinical we have those connections of you know just getting to know somebody on a deeper level and being able to ask you know what happened why are you here like this so asking those questions really got him to that point Mm -hmm. and so again it was another six months or so of going to detox relapsing coming back failing cursing us out because it was a bad idea. But he kept coming back. He kept coming back. So eventually it stuck. Um, He went to detox. He went to uh, aftercare. He went to a sober house where he has been living for two and a half years. He recently... He's got to be 80 now. He is. Wow. Uh, I think he is. He just got his own apartment. (laughs) Okay. He is, I believe, a year sober at this point. And he talks to his mom every day. Wow. Who is still alive. (laughs) I bet you this is thrilling for her it to is. finally be reconnected with her son. I mean, Absolutely. just think if it went the other way. Absolutely. You know? um, she's got to be 100 and whatever. <laughs> she's lived a good long life. <laughs> we don't well, that's a wonderful. Wow, what a great outcome. <laughs> yes. Sure. It was, wow. And, you know, we have a lot like that, a lot of yeah. outcomes like that. And yeah. we have a lot that don't end like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, you know. But those are the ones that keep you going. Those are the ones that keep yeah. us going. And those yeah. are the ones that when it's a slow day and there's no one in the space, our staff will sit around and talk about, hey, you know, I saw so-and-so the other day, and, you know, he was at a recovery meeting, and he looks great. Or I saw so-and-so, she was going to her class at Stick. Mm-hmm. You know, these people that we know from their lowest of lows, that's how we keep going is we see them at their highest of highs. And it's not us that got them there, but it's the support of peers that gave them the strength to get there themselves. Wow. Wow. That's great. Um, and now you have... I mean, certainly, he's an exception. Um, mm-hmm. Eighty years old, that now is seeing his mom exception, every day. Yes. Wow! I hope I can talk to my mom every day <laughs> when I'm eighty. I hope I get to eighty. <laughs> but, yes. Wow, that's a great story. 
Um, and you have other success stories too. I know you have lots of them, but uh, any ones that you want to highlight again? Sure. Yeah. Um, there's this one woman, and she is, you know, she used to come to us all the time. A yeah. uh, younger woman, I believe she's in her 40s. And um, she would come to us. She was um, addicted to many substances, very much homeless. And again, happy to do those things. Mm -hmm. And she would come in and she would be pretty combative uh, verbally with us as a staff, you know. If she tried to come in while she was under an influence, that's why we have the doorbell. They stop at the door and we can do a quick little... A little assessment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. To make sure they're safe yep. to come in the space. Mm -hmm. um, and we'd turn her away often because she was oftentimes under an influence. And uh, she did not like that. And she would get very angry with us, you know. And this was going on for years of she was using, was homeless, and that was okay. Eventually, she kind of did the same thing. She went to detox. It didn't work. <laughs> she went to detox. It did not work. Um, over and over, but she would always come back to us for that support mm -hmm. of knowing that we were a place that isn't going to judge you for your addiction. We're going to be there to support the person behind the addiction. Um, and eventually, you know, one time it stuck, and she went to aftercare in a sober house, and all these steps, and it took a long time. Um, she's now in an apartment of her own. She is about two years sober, I believe, wow. if I'm getting my timeline right. Mm -hmm. Um, she's taking classes at STIC. She's 45. She's the oldest person in her math class, and she's very proud of it. <laughs> um, she just passed her, uh, I think it was her algebra test, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other day, she still comes to us, you know, in her sober state. And yeah. so she came in, and she was like, Katie, I need help, because we have a computer in our space that people mm -hmm. can use. Mm -hmm. And um, she handed me this piece of paper in an envelope, and she was shaking, and I was like, okay, what is it? And it was a code to take her permit test, because she hadn't had her license in a very long time. Oh. And so we sat down at the computer. I was like, I'm not giving you an answer, but I will get you to the website and we can do this. Perfect. Yeah. She passed in our space. Wow. Yeah, it was <laughs> awesome. incredible. The celebration was epic. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, she just turned around and she actually has an interview on the BHN website for the living room. If oh, anyone wow. wants to check that out. Um, wow. But yeah. she, you know, she turned to us, she goes, you know, she's like, I used to yell at you guys. You guys, I used to curse you out, curse your name. She goes, look at us now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it's just, yeah. you know, having that rapport and seeing the person behind yeah. how they act in addiction or how they act in the throes of a mental health crisis. Mm -hmm. That's where peers come in is we are always person focused, not addiction focused. And we're not diagnosed focused. You know, we're just look at the person. Yeah. And I, I can see already, um, a, a good part of the success is is what you guys are doing and th your ability to see through that and the, the trust that people have in you um, is is a big key to this whole success. Now, Tatiana, I know you've been there for five years um, <laughs> and you had gone through your own experience, right? And your own experience that led you to where you are today. Mm. Um, you want to talk a little bit about what, what progressed with yourself and your story? Uh, yes, um, I am in long-term recovery, um, celebrating 10 years maybe awesome. this yeah, year. Awesome, yeah, nice. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 10 years, um, uh, it's November, and when I started at the living room, I was at the five-year mark, and so um, it's been a journey, it's been a journey. I was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, come from a very long line of alcoholics and addicts. So that was basically our um, legacy, you know. And so <laughs> I come from a relatively big family. And at, you know, at the turning point where I was able to go out on my own, when I turned 18, I just reckless, wild, careless, and, you know, I, I was still able to hold jobs, I was still able to do the day-to-day, -day, but drinking and using was my nine-to-five. You were, you were functioning five through it. Five to but ten, then, yeah, yeah, like okay. it was my full-time job yeah. from 19 to, I would say, good 26. Um, you know, it's one of those stories where you're you turn 21 and the legal drink is just not that celebratory, <laughs> you know? I, I remember that Because you moment. had all that yeah, experience prior like, to that, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is a really expensive ice water, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. yeah, I was that kind of a drinker and, and I was that kind of a, you know, youth. And, um, you know, I always had it in me that I, I would do better, I would, I would be better. 
Um, I lost my mother at a very young age, um, strong believer in childhood trauma being healed first before you try to support someone else. And so once I had gotten the message and, and I'd received the message many times, you know, many detoxes, many treatment centers later, um, somebody finally sat me down and I was ready to receive this message and it was, it's not your fault. And that probably changed my life. Addiction is a disease. Those types of conversations start to propel me in a way where I can now see reality. I'm not living in this dysfunction anymore. I, I, am, I come from a really good family. I am also a military brat. My dad's vet from uh, Iraq, and, and I'm just like, I know better, you know? And you have that, it's just like, you put the stuff down, finally you can breathe, you can think straight, you get your body right. Um, you know, I would try to reach out to family, but I realized that was a hindrance in my journey when I was new. So I really just stopped and thought about what I needed when I finally was ready to get treatment. And I went through Carlson at BHN as well, <laughs> multiple times, and, and I can't speak to, I can't speak enough good to the staff there, the nurses who really understand the struggle of somebody who really, really wants to get sober and has to come back week after week. I was one of those. I left AMA. I'm done. <laughs> I'm cured. I've eaten. I've slept. I've even showered. I am good. And I'd come back the next week, beat down. And, you know, probably the fourth time I went to Carlson sober because I just didn't want to pick up. And they understood that notion. Mm -hmm. And so from there, I would get into, um, it's it was called something else, Arbor House. It's now Phoenix, Phoenix House, House or something yeah. in Holyoke. Mm -hmm. um, it was co-ed, which worked for me because I didn't have any yeah, distractions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could focus on myself. <laughs> All the other girls are just like, oh, it's co-ed, yay. <laughs> so I had that added benefit of just being able to focus on my needs, getting to know myself. And I think that's the key piece for people who really, really take this seriously is get to know yourself. What do you like? What do you dislike? Now your, your, your body's healing. Your nervous system is healing. And I couldn't figure, why am I crying all the time? I'm such a <laughs> sensitive person. And realize, you know, in the street, you have no feeling. You're numb. But here I am just so sensitive and I'm like, oh my God. What's you know? happening to me now? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I gotta go to bed <laughs> yeah. at eight o'clock. You know, these are new things and people just cannot understand how your body needs to heal um, from the decades of damage. Um, and so, you know, five years later, um, I was introduced to the living room, never heard of it before. It had been up and running for three or four years already. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, <clears throat> recovery coaches were stationed there. That was a very new program. And so my roommate at the time was also a recovery coach. Um, the, f the founders, we'll say, is Justin Mel. Um, he's like a big deal in Connecticut right now. And Matt Leone is definitely worth a shout out um, because one was very, very peer, one was very, very clinical, and it's like their love child, mm -hmm. the living room. And so with clinical oversight, the living room is so successful with um, providing support and services, or one or the other. Um, and so when I step into the living room as, you know, this newly sober person, I wanted to save the world with my recovery story and my big book and my 12-step background and this is the way. And you quickly find out that at that level, a lot of people have no idea what recovery is. Mm -hmm. So you learn to listen. Um, you listen to learn. Oh, I thought I'd never be that nice. cliche. That was it, nice. happened. it happened. <laughs> Did you make that up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have heard it before, <laughs> um, but it is so true in this yeah. instance. And you learn what people are looking for because not everybody um, is successful one way or the other. And certainly I needed a structured, disciplined routine. Um, much to my dismay, you know, because I like to be a wild and free. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it's a big just like, shift. Hey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but now yeah. I'm just like eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock. That stuff really helped me manage my day, the free time, the the crazy thoughts, um, surrounding myself with the network, the team of peers. There were, you know, just human, 
And I think that's the difference of people being themselves and, and getting supported to do that. We're encouraged to be ourselves. And the peer-to-peer -peer aspect is, is yeah. obviously really important and Absolutely. the trust you've established. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think the relatability, yeah. which you certainly can offer. That's all peers are, is, is we can relate right. to every situation that walks through our door. Mm -hmm. um, together. Together. Not, not all of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. together. Not <laughs> all of us. No one we have a hard time relating to our family. <laughs> right. So <laughs> but I get that. Yeah. So we have yeah. different peers. You know, we have yeah. peers that are, you know, in recovery from substances, peers that are in recovery from mental health, peers that are in recovery from domestic violence. So at any given time on our staff, on a shift, Almost anyone who walks through that door, we have a staff member that goes, I've been exactly where you are, or been very close to where you are. Mm -hmm. And that's how that trust forms. And I think when you said listen to learn to listen and listen to learn, that's so really good. so important because I, I can see it. There's a lot of people who want to talk to someone who can't relate, and they're, they're not even listening to me. Absolutely. They can't, and they get tuned out, turned off. When you know there's somebody zeroing in on you, you say, oh, they're actually paying attention. We have a lot of people yeah. that come through the living room for the first time. And mm -hmm. the, the process is they come in and have a first conversation one-on-one yes. -on -one yeah. with a, a peer, whoever that may be. And a lot of times we hear, wow, this is the first time I feel like I've been listened to exactly. in a very long time. Yes. Or when they get to go cook their own meal, mm -hmm. wow, this is the first time I've cooked my own meal in six years. You know, this is the first time I felt comfortable. I felt safe. I felt like I've, I'm in a home. Mm -hmm. which is why we're called the living room. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. It's a beautiful room. Thank I you. mean, uh, I've seen the pictures. I haven't been there physically, but it's... it's a, you should come on down. It's very comfortable. I might stay a while. You could stay a while. That's fine. <laughs> you can yeah. support. <laughs> yeah. And I think when you talk, we talked about the peer-to-peer, -peer, we talked about trust. And also, I think there's a key aspect to this is patience, which I've heard you talk about yes. really a lot, is it, it, like in the first example, this person who came in, 76, 77 years old, kind of grumpy, anybody might have just said, you just go away. But no, you had the <laughs> patience, right, to, to keep this going and look what resulted. The living room yeah. has taught me that I am way more patient than I ever thought I was. Mm. Um, and I think that your patience level is affected when you realize that, you know, these are people's lives. These are human beings. You know, you can't get mad at somebody who's struggling with a disease like addiction or a mental illness. Um, so there are a lot of times where frustration could sink in really easily. Um, but yeah, this, I think, and it, this is a pretty common sentiment about, among our staff, is that this job teaches you patience that you did not know you had. Wow. Yeah. And you know, you've talked earlier about <clears throat> how exhausting it can be yeah. because the highs the lows and I'll tell you so a couple things that I wrote a book a couple now a couple years ago called voices from the fallen where I interviewed eight different people and the point of me bringing this up is I'll give each a copy a special gift for Please. being a guest Thank you. but um but the point I was gonna get to is in writing this book my eyes were opened um, so much talk about being exhausted there's eight different stories eight different mm -hmm. uh, outcomes, effects, and so on, um, it, it was emotionally exhausting. I had to stop writing. I was crying when I was writing it. I had to stop for months at a time. I said, oh my God, this is just f unbelievable what people have gone through. Now in this book, I didn't shy away from it. He said, there's, there's the, the times when, you know, the reality is people die from this. Mm -hmm. um, you can't shy away from it. But there's great success stories, and that's what keeps you going. But, and my point is, I have a newfound respect for people who work through this every single day. I could hardly take it for, you know, the short time I was writing, but I had the option of taking a break. Right. You don't, and that's a huge amount of respect. And and, um, and also too to the end, I've gotten to know some of the staff at BHN. Phenomenal people. It's a great staff. Michelle, Joy, both of you, and I just yeah. think which Michelle. There's many Michelles. Well, one <laughs> I'll say Michelle McCallion. She's okay. she's okay. also a. a a neighbor, mm -hmm. so I've known her outside of this. Oh, that's so just got this started, yeah. So um, I didn't meet the other Michelle, so I don't know. You got She's to. probably just as nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, BHN. Yeah. I mean, all yeah. of our departments yeah. work together yeah. every day. Yeah. Um, BHN really facets every level of care you could really ever need for mental illness or for substance use. Mm -hmm. um, so we are all pretty connected and pretty, you know, have great communication between departments. It's a really wonderful staff. Yeah, sure is. You guys got so much happening there. I do yeah. want to add that mm -hmm. I think a really important piece is that you don't have to be suffering mm -hmm. in order to receive support. You Absolutely. Know, 
we as professionals are told we should have therapists and stuff like that. So it's like, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. You you know, to each other, right? Yeah. We are. Yes. Each other's therapists. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Just yes. like, you know, yeah. you can come in. You're welcome. You don't need to have an issue to utilize the living yes. room specifically. If you want to come in because it's 100 degrees outside, that's that's good that's enough. Enough of a reason. <laughs> so yeah. Please come in. You want to come in to hide from wildfire smoke? Sure. Oh, anyone is welcome. Careful. Um, yeah. You know, and <laughs> there is a space limit. You know, there's seven people yeah. at a time, time limit. But we try to make sure there's you know room and space for everybody. Um, and you do, and we'd prefer if you were not going through an emotional <laughs> breakdown. But we are here for that too. Do you ever think, be careful what you ask for? <laughs> because <laughs> you well, know you, you said you've had a line outside your door yeah. before, right? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, um, yeah. Every, yeah. Day. Yeah. every day. Yeah. Every day. Every day. There's a line. Open. And, and, and I think the great thing is that you can come in and just see it. You, mm -hmm. can, you don't have to stay or, you know, commit mm -hmm. to it. Just look around because if this is something that you can, you know, be a part of, or you're welcome. You're welcome to come in. And I also want to say that I, I'm reading your book. I read your book it's as well. It's oh, phenomenal. You? Yes. Oh, oh, thank you. It's and we're going to take copies to pass them on. Yeah, oh, sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know you guys had already read it. <laughs> yeah, but I yes, took two copies I mean, from the meeting. Oh, good. And gave them to us. Okay. It is okay. phenomenal, um, just the attention to detail. And the rawness behind it as well, how raw and honest it is as well. I've gotten to know, in fact, a lot of people I knew most of my life in here. So that's why I was emotionally connected to this. Jack Jonah being mm -hmm. one of them, um, and other friends who I've changed names for. But that's probably why it affected me so much. But it's just, it's very, it's, I often say these are not case studies. These are raw emotional stories that gets into the personal aspect with family members, as you, as you could see. But you could see how, it, I said, whew, I I love the different day. perspectives on the same situation because you know yeah. there's three sides to every oh, story. Yeah. <laughs> I love that piece, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's how a therapist talks. You know, <laughs> it was so good because it's just like you think you're yeah. just like, you <coughs> oh, know, being the person that's active, you think that you are saving everybody from your circus and your chaos, but everyone around you is just like, well, I saw the circus, I want my money back. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was good. It was yeah. so good. And well, thank um, you. Thank you, know, you for saying that. It's yeah. really important work that you're doing here. You know, it's it's um, one of the things that I've I learned, and I could see it also too, but until it came out, because when I was interviewing people, I heard the person telling their story, and then I interviewed maybe their wife, or, and they said, that's not at all what it was like. <laughs> <laughs> it's very different. Yeah. Let me tell you yeah. my two cents. Yeah. Right. And it, it's yeah. almost, it's humorous, but it's also eye-opening. And, and that's what I thought was an important thing. Um, well, thanks both both of you uh, for coming on. And now, before we leave, can you mention one more the, the website and the phone number, just so people want to know more about it? Sure. So, so yeah. we are at uh, bhn.org, right? Inc. Bh, Bhninc.org, uh, okay. um, and but I'll bring you to the homepage of BHN. There's an emergency services tab. We're right under the emergency services tab. That's where you'll find the living room. That's where you find the living room. And a nice video featuring Tatiana that gives you a little virtual tour nice. of said yeah. living room. Okay. Katie also has a video. We don't right. have to talk about my video. No, <laughs> and, You're uh, on one now, by the way. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Forgot. <laughs> All right, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. um, and the All right. phone number is 413-310-3312. All right. Well, thank you both. Uh, for coming out. I appreciate your time and both here uh, another copy to, to hand out. Of course. Thank so, you. We have um, some swag for you as well. Oh, wow. Thank you <laughs> um, very much. You're pretty much it's honorary wonderful. employee at this point. All right. Yes. Well, thank you <laughs> <Of course laughs> so much. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> thank you for today. having us yes, on. Yes, thank you so much. Appreciate it both. And thanks everybody for listening. See you soon. Thanks.